Norman from South Carolina, Mr. Norman. Thank, the, thank both of you for taking the time to come before the Rules Committee. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Nadler, you, um, <clears throat> you know, you, we, we're hearing a good bit of language now about how you support the police and are against defunding. Uh, when asked by the uh, New York Post, would you be in favor of defunding New York police budget, your reply, yes, it should certainly be cut. Uh, we're spending too much money on the police. There should be substantial cuts to the police budget and reallocation of those funds to where we need them. Uh, in 2020, during the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, you would end qualified immunity for law enforcement officers. End qualified immunity, which would eliminate from the police officers I talked to entire forces. Um, in, two th in June of 17th, the New York City Council passed a budget that cut the funding, the New York uh, Police Department's funding by one billion. Um, the 200 people were arrested in, in the New York City in the protest following the death of George Floyd two months ago, March 23rd, um, March of 2023, a settlement in federal court said New York City would compensate 320 New Yorkers, more than 21,000 each, who were surrounded, arrested, or subjected to excessive force by police, as well as another 2,500 to each person who received a desk appearance ticket. Uh, two questions. One, I assume you stick by these comments. The second, I stick by my comments, not necessarily by some other things that were there. Do you deny anything I read? No. So you stick by that? Yeah. And you're, you're making the case for why you support the police and are criticizing everything at Congressman Biggs. When I said, just said what, hold on, let me just ask you sorry. something. Uh, you're, with, with this in your of, of record, <coughs> you're now making the case for why what Mr. Biggs is describing does not support the police because it leaves out the Capitol Police, in your opinion. You realize <clears throat> New York City, New York has lost 300,000 residents. Many of them are coming to South Carolina because of just what I mentioned here. I don't know how you can sit there and make the statement you're making when your record is one of, is completely dismal when it comes to supporting the police who are uh, such brave, a brave family of officers who do it for no other reason than protect the public. And you're sitting here making statements like you are as some big supporter. I don't get it. I really don't. Can I answer? Are you finished? Yes, sir. Well, several things. First of all, I did say that the New York City Police Department budget should be reduced in order to devote more uh, resources to mental health. Um, and that was done. About a billion dollars was shifted from the police to the mental health. And that's because when, when you're in the subway, I mean, we just saw an example of this uh, last week with Mr. Neely. Uh, when you're in the subway uh, and someone is acting out, what you need is a mental health person, not a police officer who's not trained for that. Um, and the city of New York recognized that, and uh, things have been better since they did that. Not good yet, but, but better. Secondly, uh, let me just mention some bills I passed last. I, I don't want to go there on that. Just, I mean, you, you're standing pretty much by what you said, which is really uh, not only is it hypocritical, it's, uh, it's not hypocritical. It's, that you're it's not hypocritical. State. Mental it's, health. It's, uh, Alvin Bragg is really doing a terrible job of support basically uh, making a mockery of the police force and, and the order of law in New York City and your, and your statistics prove it. It's up by 34%. And people are leaving your state. And it's, it's, it's uh, going to continue from what I hear. My wife used to love to go there. Not going again. By just as what, what happened on the subways, there's no place in New York that's safe other than a few places. Mr. Mr. Uh, Biggs, the uh, criticisms have been leveled at, as you responded to uh, outlandish claims by the Democratic, uh, spoke, uh, Democrat representatives here on the Rules Committee. Have you ever heard anything like this before? To sit here at, uh, when, when they were in charge, they did everything but uh, 
dismantle the police and support it. They supported the, the criminals rather than the victims and blamed it on mental illness, which I don't doubt. But uh, people that do, do the shootings now are mentally ill. But do you get what they're getting at? Hey, uh, Ms. Mr. Norman, I appreciate that. Uh, you asked if I'd ever heard anything like this before? Yeah, I sit on the Judiciary Committee. We hear this a lot, this type of stuff a lot. And, you know, I, I, don't know, I don't know if you want me to start reading off all the statements uh, that I have here from, from Democrats, members of this Congress, about, about defunding. You've heard the one from uh, Ranking Member Nadler, and my, you might not have heard the one from Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, who told CNN regarding defunding the police, you have to look at it, the, that on a case-by-case -case basis. How about Cori Bush? She's kind of the poster child for defunding the police. Uh, uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she says, this is what happens when leaders sign blank check after blank check to militarize police, CBP, et cetera, while letting violence go unchecked. We need answers and we need to defend. And after New York, cut that billion dollars you're talking about. She said she thought the, cost didn't, the cuts didn't go far enough. Representative Jamal Bowman said similar things. She said, too many police in our country are more concerned with protecting white supremacy than serving the communities that pay their salaries. We don't need police with lethal weapons carrying out routine traffic stops. We need to reallocate police funding to unarmed traffic forces to remove even the possibility of sanctioned manslaughter. If you've ever worked with police, if you've ever done traffic, which I did, I prosecuted traffic offenses. The last thing in the world I want is to send anybody out there to deal with people um, who are, maybe they're drunk, maybe they're agitated, and they're unarmed to defend themselves in the public. Representative Pramila Jayapal said, it's completely reasonable for us to shift significant resources from law enforcement and invest in people. Again, Ilan Omar, Representative Ilan Omar. Representative Ayanna Presley said, the defund movement isn't new. Folks are just finally listening. We got money for wars, but can't feed the poor. And finally, Representative Rashida Tlaib said, when we say defund police, what we mean is people are dying and we need to invest in people's livelihoods instead. So, Representative Norman, when you asked me, have I ever heard stuff like this before? Yeah, I have. I sit on the, on the Judiciary Committee, and this is their message constantly. And so um, it gets convoluted and lost, but they're the party that's really happy to defund police. Yield back. <clears throat> the preview of coming attractions is being seen all across this country with the illegal aliens that the Democratic Party is allowing to come into this country. Don't check them out, have no, no uh, background report, don't know, if they sh don't know if they got the COVID shot or not when they were coming across when I went. You're from Arizona. You're a border state. We're all from border states now. 15 million that will be in this country. I don't know how you walk that back. And the, the most unfair part of that is when that police officer stops a, a illegal alien, doesn't know anything about him, doesn't know uh, whether his driver's license is real or not, that life is in danger of that officer. And it is a sad day in this country that they are allowing this to happen. No one on this panel has spoken up against the tragedy and the hypocrisy of allowing our borders, this country, to be invaded, which you can't take, can't say any other way. We've got an invasion going on, and hopefully the next administration will uh, do what they can to deport the whatever number that can come in. And how many lives are going to be lost is so sad. I yield back.